Hi there folks, welcome back to another video and today is a great one, I'll tell you. I'm going to get to show you how I got these panels up on the solar ground mount. A few oops along the way, but this is one exciting project. So a little bit of history, unfortunately because of the pandemic, I just couldn't seem to get panels I wanted. I even ordered some online and the supplier said, oh, I'm sorry, uh, they show on our website, but we don't have them. And so I started to phone around and I looked locally and all over. Finally, to the rescue, Tree Public, a company in Southern California, and a special shout out to Omar, the staff member I talked to who confirmed, yes, they do have panels. Yes, they have the ones I want. And yes, they will ship them right to my little off-grid cabin. So as I mentioned before, there's eight 340 watt Q-cell panels. So I'm so thankful for the great service I had at Tree Public. In order to attach the solar panels to the two by six supports, I'm gonna use eight 10 foot long super struts. And yeah, I did haul them in the Toyota Corolla. I also picked up a package of 5 8 hex bolts to go with the 5 8 cone nuts. So make sure you measure the place where the bolt goes through on the panel. In this case, 5 8 was too big. Back to Home Depot. Speaking of cone nuts, time for a cone of ice cream. I had to come in town to uh, Home Depot and get supplies, so time to do a break at my favorite ice cream store. Mmm. Real test of an ice cream store for me is, do they have pistachio almond? And they do. So to make things more uniform, I trimmed off the ends of all the 2x6 supports so they would be even. To attach the super strut to the 2x6, I chose 2.5 inch cabinet screws, which were long and thin but strong, and 3 16 inch washers. Only problem is I had too short a bit, and yep. Time to go back to Home Depot and get a longer one. This one did the trick beautifully. I couldn't wait to put a panel on even though the super struts weren't even cut to size yet. So the idea here folks is to line up these cone nuts with the unistrut, those rails, and hopefully things, as they say, won't go off the rails. So this quarter inch bolt threads into the cone nut with the washer on it. And it just goes in like this and then it rotates like so. Now it'll slide up and down in the track. So I'm going to pre-fit uh, these. I'm going to put these on the panel first and then slide everything up, hopefully. Okay, to uh, attach these uh, cone nuts to the back of the panel, first you take uh, what I have is a quarter inch bolt, a hexagon bolt, and then I'll uh, put the washer on like so and then I'll just um, thread them through the hole in the solar panel and then the cone nut goes with the dish shape faced towards the panel.
This part was a, a lot more tricky than it looked and definitely a skill I needed to learn. I actually destroyed about five conuts during the learning process. Finally, they're a proper fit and they're in place. Previously, in order to have power in my cabin, I had two of these panels propped up against the building. More on that later. At first, I used the gorilla cart to help with the panels, but later on, I found them being only 40 pounds, I could safely carry them. I decided to make the 10 foot long unistrut just a bit over 8 foot long. Well, with so many projects around here, including the solar build, um, you can bet I'm in definite need of sawhorses. And I'm not sure I could really build some decent ones, to be honest. But the sawhorse scenario has drastically changed. Check this out. This is the Bora Speed Horse, and we're talking one serious, cool set of sawhorses. These were sent to me by really kind subscriber Terry and his wife, and uh, all I can say is. Incredible. <laughs> Thank you. A lot. I'll try not to get too emotional here. <laughs> and I had no idea while these sawhorses from Terry and, and Spouse were being delivered via UPS, another anonymous subscriber sent me one of these as well. Bring on the projects. We're ready. So as you folks can imagine, when I was thinking of all the Unistrut I had to cut, which is metal, I was like, I don't have anything to cut that with, uh, except for the hacksaw. <laughs> so, guess what happened? Subscriber Eric sent me this beauty. This is a Metabo reticulating saw. Absolutely beautiful and sure does the trick when it comes to sawing metal. And the only glitch was, uh, should have read the description. It says the battery comes separately. No problem. Subscriber Steven to the rescue. The battery and the charger. And then you just pop it in like that. So I went to Home Depot and got this Diablo 9 inch medium metal blade. And it works great. We're ready to cut metal. My very first time using a reticulating saw. I found the Unistrut bounced around a lot, but no problem. The speed horses have notches that take care of that. So here I'm simply measuring where I'm going to be placing the two and a half inch cabinet screws that attach the Unistrut to the two by six wooden supports. Now that I decided on the specific size of all the Unistrut, 
I can go back and cut the two I've already placed to size. This saw was absolutely super and made short work of cutting Unistrut. Here I am doing my best to be precise with the spacing of all the supports where the panels will eventually rest. To keep the wind from blowing all the supports out of their pre-measured places I had for them, I figured now was the best time to attach the hurricane ties. The top ones are not screwed down so that I can easily make adjustments along the way. And the bottom ones have only one screw that I can easily undo in case the spacing of these supports is off. I'm using Simpson Strong Drive connector screws that are number nines and an inch and a half long. Now the ground mount was looking really sturdy and I couldn't have been happier with the progress. So I've laid the panel carefully up against these 2x6s so the uh, Unistrut won't cut into the back of them. And now it's just a matter of trying to line these up with the unistruts. So as you can see, even though I've lined up the cone nuts on the underside of the panel with the Unistrut, um, this panel is too tight to the other one. So the good news, of course, is, is I haven't um, totally screwed down these uh, hurricane ties that are supporting this. So I can just tap things uh, one way or the other and make it fit. Yeah, that's a lot more realistic. And just as nice as can be. Ah, love that. All by themselves, the conuts dropped into their proper channels. Now, I can turn them. I'll, uh, I'll show you. So it's, so it's pretty hard to see down in here, but what I'm doing here, very carefully rotating it there. So now it's rotated and it's in place just like that. Now I'm turning those sections of metal in the cone nut. Amazing. I think I'm getting better at this. I think. So what I'm going to do is gingerly go underneath there with a open-ended wrench and tighten those down. So obviously I need something to put spaces between the panels. I've got two paint stir sticks that I've cut in half and taped together and those will make a nice gap. It's, it's around a half inch 
Um, so that should work pretty good. I can tighten those down and then they'll be in place and be solid and I won't have to worry about it. Oops, calculations were off and so um, <clears throat> those uh, last two panels are going to bump into the posts so I'm going to have to cut those off. It won't matter too much, it's just um, always a little annoying when your calculations are not perfect but uh, give them a cut and then things should be fine. Big no-no, no safety glasses. I'll get some. Always away, both batteries. <coughs> both batteries down and my solar panels aren't hooked up for charging. Oh well, time for the handsaw. Gotta buy a new handsaw, that one's way too dull. But I'm not outgunned, I have a secret weapon. The old Femarest sleeping mat provides a comfortable place for the knees and also an excellent soft landing place in case the panel slips and comes down. And yes, I had that happen once. should know by now, push that further up so there's room for the bottom one to slide. Hmm. Live and learn, although that's the last panel. So to be uh, Super safe, I'll go in with a wrench, put that in the right place and then tighten it down uh, so it doesn't come down and cause unrest. So once we tighten these top two uh, <clears throat> hex bolts, then that'll tighten in on the cone nuts and these two top ones will prevent everything from sliding away while I tighten down the other bottom row of nuts. Hope that makes sense. Now I can remove the uh, quick clamps from the, uh, the top guy after I put in the, the spacers made out of the paint stir sticks to keep uh, these the proper distance from each other. So all I got to do is raise up this hurricane tie a bit and that should fix it all. And I'll use, literally use my head like an old sheep. There. Finally, all the hard work paid off, and eight panels now have a safe and secure home. And honestly, I felt a great deal of accomplishment and thoroughly enjoyed this project. 
So thanks so much, folks, for staying with me during this solar array build. And uh, I'm really surprised. There's a lot of folks have subscribed and seem to have a lot of interest in this project. So if you have any questions about my particular solar array, uh, leave them in the comments below or send me an email. So I can imagine that a lot of folks, especially that are uh, very knowledgeable about solar, are wondering, well, what's Don going to do for a charge controller, a, uh, an inverter, a combiner box, and all of those electronical parts that bring electricity to his little tiny, uh, tiny cabin. And so in the next video, you'll get to see just what I did. And it's going to be a little unconventional. I'll just give you that much of a hint. So you'll want to subscribe and join me on the next video just to see how all of this turns out and I get electricity. Oh, and also a special thanks to Bill over at Upside of Downsizing. I've been watching Bill's channel, oh wow, for years when I was back in California even. And Bill gave some really good tips on uh, just the proper angle for these panels. And uh, I learned a lot from what he did with his solar array. And Bill and his wife Yvonne are building this really cool straw bale home. You might want to check that out. So I'll leave a link in the description of this video to Bill's channel. Thanks so much, and we'll see you on the next video.